good evening. We've assembled this evening to pay tribute to the life and memory of Mary Nelson. By our coming together as family and close friends, we are acknowledging the impact that Mary had on, on each of our lives in some way. And in moments uh, such as these, I know that each of our minds is uh, flooded with happy and joyful memories of our associations with Mary. And we will forever hold these memories dearly in our hearts and our minds. And I always want to assure people and you this evening that memories are the gift of God, that one gift of God that death cannot destroy. Just hold on to these memories each and every day. We shall remember Mary's hospitality to family and friends, <clears throat> her caring spirit, her words of wisdom and guidance at times, her friendliness, her service to God and others, her deep faith, and most importantly, her love for her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With the passing of time, these shall not diminish in their influence upon our homes, upon our church, upon our community, and upon our own lives. And we assemble this evening in the name of Jesus Christ, whom she loved meaningfully, and she served faithfully, and who has now received her into heaven with the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Therefore, this evening our hearts are set at ease with the promise of Jesus who said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And to share a couple of portions of scripture this evening, First from the Old Testament, very familiar, I'm sure. I know Mary would know this Psalm 23 by heart. I can remember any time that when I was pastoring, if I'd go to visit her in her home or at the hospital, when I'd read the scripture, she was just saying it right along with me. So I'm sure, I'm sure she knows this one. But it brings us comfort tonight. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then I'd like to read some verses by Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And he's speaking here of the coming of the Lord. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep, or to grieve like the rest of men who had no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage or comfort each other with these words. May these words of Scripture tonight bring us comfort and assurance. Could we just bow in a moment of prayer? Heavenly Father, we bow in this moment of remembrance and service for, for Mary tonight. And we know, Father, that 
You are our refuge and strength. You are an ever-present help in our time of trouble. You, Father, are the God who has promised that you will undergird us and lift us up with your everlasting arms. And I pray, Father, that uh, the family members this night and friends might, Father, know that uh, they can walk with the shepherd tonight. And they can know his strength and his uh, refreshing and his encouraging in their lives. And Father, may we find hope in the fact that we know that uh, those who uh, die as believers, that they're uh, with uh, Jesus in heaven this night, and we know that's where Mary is. And that someday, Father, Jesus will come again, and all those of us who remain on this earth as his children will be caught up with all of them together. So, Father, I pray tonight that as uh, we participate in this service of remembrance, that, Father, you would guide each one that participates, that, Father, we might just receive comfort from all that is shared tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we're going to have special music. I want to say before I sing that I really appreciated these two songs that Mary chose. Very old songs, very beautiful songs, and I'm like, they were perfect for what she was saying because with her faith, she knows, she knew where she was going, and she talks about, I'm going to meet him in that city so fair, and ever there with him abide. I think it was meant for a real lively quartet, but I'll do my best. <laughs>
Mr. Sarkinov, get out of the way here. <laughs> Today, we're celebrating the homecoming of my sister-in-law, Mary Nelson. Mary was the best sister-in-law anybody could want. And I want to share a few memories we have of her life here on earth. I got to know Mary in the early days of my and Dawn's dating years. There wasn't a lot to do for a date in Albert County in the 50s, so she often invited us to her place on a Saturday evening, sometimes making our newly discovered treat of pizza. Mary was a servant of the Lord and a very social woman. She enjoyed teaching pioneer girls at church and was always ready to transport kids to be sure they were able to be part of the program. She loved Women's Institute and participated in that for years. She loved the Albert County Fair, submitting many entries, and often won prizes in handwork and in produce. Mary served and blessed our family from the beginning. She, uh, we knew she was always ready to take care of our children when we were traveling. The first time being when Kathy was only a few weeks old. Mary loved Christmas. She had a knack of finding such special gifts for everyone. She loved shopping and all year long kept her eye out for bargains that would be just the right gift for someone. The more bargains she could find, the more gifts she could afford. As most of you know, Don and I were missionaries in Africa for 35 years. Because of Mary and Elmo, we always knew they were here standing behind us and always looking after every need of our parents. Mary devoted her life to looking after her family. After Mary graduated from high school, she wanted to be a nurse. But because you had to be 21 in order to enter nursing, other things happened. So she never made it. She met a very special man, Elmo Nelson. And after two special needs children, having two special needs children was a challenge which she bravely handled. Teaching them, coaching them, and always being sure that they interacted with others. Lynn and Lauren each had playmates who were always welcomed in her home. Over the uh, many years, uh, Lynn loved cutting out pictures and sticking them in a scrapbook. People often passed on magazines for her. Lauren loved horses and was thrilled to have his first horse, a pony called Chip. Also for a few years, uh, Lauren and Mary had a weather station at Baltimore where they sent daily reports to the weather office. Mary may never have been able to take nurses training, but she still spent her life nursing her children and her parents in their later years, and for her husband in his later years. In fact, when her children were in the hospital, she spent as much time with them as possible because she felt she could do a better job than the nurses. Our family have wonderful memories of Christmases with Mary and family on their times when we were home from Africa in 1971. Her sister Gladys and family were home for the rest of, from the West for Christmas. We had planned Christmas at Dawn's parents, and unexpectedly, because of the storm, our family, Gladys and family, Mary and family, were all there in that small house for Christmas Eve, overnight and day, all 13 of us. There were 13 stockings hung around the wainscoting in the dining room, all full and overflowing, and the gifts in the living room flowed out from the tree into the middle of the room. Mary has given wonderful memories to us all. We still speak of this special Christmas with Gay, Mary's niece. When our children, Kathy and Michael, finished high school in Kenya and came back to Canada for further education, we knew and appreciated so much 
that we uh, had family here who would be there for them. And because we were in Kenya, when our children met that special someone, they brought them home to Mary and Elmo's place to meet our family. And they especially wanted them to experience a Christmas with Mary. She always made our children feel they were welcome at any time. In the last years, now that we were retired, I've got to know Mary even better. I learned that Mary had many fears in life, but she never let those fears stop her from serving others. She feared driving at night over lonely roads, but it never stopped her from being willing to go out to meetings and to help others to be there as well. <coughs> in the later years of uh, Mary's mother's life, while they still lived in their own home, Mary arose early, walked down the hill, often in the dark, to be sure her mother ate right and had her insulin injections. She made that trip as well in the evenings, despite the fear of that dark lane. Then, in their last few years, Mary had her parents in, uh, move in with her, taking care of them until they passed away. In later years, when for health reasons, Mary and Elmo needed help, I was so thankful that Kathy and family were ready to come and be there for Mary and family, just as Mary had been there for her for many years. And Kathy's children thought of Mary as grandma and called her Grammy. Although Mary would never admit she really needed any help, she remained the ever-attentive nurse for Lynn and Lauren right up to their departure to heaven. For years, she had short and broken nights of sleep because someone in her family needed her. Mary was always ready to help in Kathy's kitchen when she could. And when her great niece, Carrie, joined the family, Mary was always ready to spend time with Carrie. Carrie loved helping in the kitchen, as all children do. And Mary was always so patient to allow Carrie to work with her. Making the Christmas fruitcake was an annual event for the two of them for a few years. Mary's fulfillment in life was to be needed. She was always willing to put herself out and to use every effort to meet the needs of others. In her later years, when there was no more family that needed her, she was at a bit of loose ends. She still loved going out, shopping, and having visitors. And Kathy, along with Leanne and Logan, so graciously helped meet many of her needs and wishes. When we visited her, we enjoyed talking about old times. She had so many memories from things her parents told her and of her early life. I was always learning something new about the family history. She was proud of the fact that she always kept a nice home, and she always worked hard to accomplish this. Woe be time that anyone would visit and see any dust or dirt on her floor. She was also proud that she owned property, the full original land grant that had been in the family for 200 years. Her land was the original 300-acre grant given to John Melton, her ancestor through her grandmother, in 1818. In 2018, the newspaper did an article on this event, uh, along with a picture of Mary. Life wasn't always easy for Mary in her latest years. Her health, and in particular, her macular degeneration hindered her from doing many things. Her diabetes had many ups and downs. With it all, at times, she had some struggles with reality, but she still loved her family. During the months of COVID-19, it was a struggle with family not being able to make visits. But good did come of it. Uh, she and I made arrangements that every night I would call her. We would chat, often recalling things from former days, and I would read a devotional to her, and Dawn would sing hymns. 
She so appreciated this because she could no longer see to read. She missed being able to read her Bible and she missed being able to get out to church. And these chants were always one hour long. I will miss that one hour of my evening part that was devoted to her. Her phone was her main contact with the family, always calling Kathy to know what's new in Baltimore. She loved Baltimore and missed it so much. Mary loved life. Mary loved her Lord and Savior. As I said at the beginning, Mary was the best sister-in-law anyone could wish for. We all loved her, and now she has heard the words of the Lord say, Welcome, my good and faithful servant. And so today, as we review the blessings Mary has been to many, we are really celebrating her new life in heaven. Death is not extinguishing the light. It is putting out the lamp because the dawn has come for her. We have all confidence in our Lord and Savior that we will see you again, Mary, so it isn't goodbye, but see you soon. Thank you, Lord, for having put your servant Mary as part of our life. As John 6.40 says, Jesus said, For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. and memories, and unlike her grandmother, she didn't feel she could do it herself. So she's asked me, uh, she's written them down, so these are her words, and I'm going to express them for her. My nearest granny, words cannot describe the amount of love I have for you. So I wonder, how can I sum up the life of such an incredible woman? Well, I can start by sharing a couple of memories that will forever be with me. I was going to make this short and sweet, but with a legacy like yours, I'm not sure that I will succeed in doing that. She had a love for her children like I've never seen before. Everyone loves their children, but her love was something really special. She made sure they had everything they needed and took care of them until their last breath. Once they had passed, she always questioned her purpose in life. And we talked often about how God must still have a plan for her to leave her behind after her husband and children had passed. And that we just had to wait and see what it could be. <clears throat> but I know the difference she has made in my life and the woman I have become, and that she was a strong witness for Christ to me and for many others. She loves Christmas, and I mean she loves Christmas. <laughs> I'll always remember our Christmas shopping days, going store to store to find the perfect gifts for everyone. But I will especially cherish the years she couldn't do the shopping. So I would spend hours with her and gather up a list and go get all the presents she asked for and come back with bags and bags and bags and bring them in, all in the Fundy Royal along with my folding table, gift wrap, and tape. And she would wrap every gift herself to make sure she could still hold on to as much of her gift-giving nature as she could, even though she couldn't do it all anymore. Christmas will forever live in my heart, and I will be missing a piece of Christmas Day without her there beside me. But I will always think of her as I wrap my presents and use way too much tape and fill the stockings with all the essentials like toothpaste and soap and get up earlier than anyone else on 
Christmas Day and wait patiently for them to all wake up. But she told me recently she was disappointed in me. Just a few months ago, we had a conversation about irons. And I said I didn't have one. She didn't know how to respond, but she insisted I use some of her money and go buy one. And I told her I didn't need one, and I would be okay with it. And she proceeded to tell me she was disappointed that I didn't have an iron in my house, and she didn't think that that was normal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll miss taking her for long drives all over Elver County, but especially Elma, as it was her favorite destination. A delicious lobster roll and a bowl of seafood chowder would make her smile every time. She was so happy the last time I picked her up at the hospital just a month ago. I had some maple sugar in the car that I had gotten for her just that morning. We had been, or she had been asking for a while for some, and I finally got it. We didn't even get out of the hospital parking lot before she was asking for some on a spoon to enjoy on the drive home. She was licking that spoon all the way to Hillsboro Road. <laughs> and I said, it's not gone yet? And she replied, it's gone, but the spoon still tastes like maple. I'm not trying to get it off. <laughs> I will miss her stubborn nature. And lucky for everyone in my life, she told me she thought I had the same problem. <laughs> Despite being legally blind, she was stubborn and demanded she do everything herself. I will remember, I'll never forget the day we went into the bank and she walked up to the counter and asked the teller for money. And the teller said she needed to use her card and PIN number to proceed. And she politely, but in a stubborn fashion, said, I've never used a card either. They know me, and I would like my money, please. <laughs> so as the teller tries again to explain, I just quietly put in her card, entered the PIN number, winked at the teller, and the teller proceeded to apologize for requiring her card and PIN number, and got her her money. <laughs> she loved visitors and phone calls, especially with anyone who wanted to talk for long periods of time. I had never seen a phone bill with over 2,700 minutes. <laughs> month after month, her phone bill came in with thousands of minutes spent enjoying time with family and friends. I'll miss buying her flowers for every occasion, and even the odd Friday for no reason at all, and picking out the bundle that wasn't quite ready so she could enjoy them for as long as possible. She would tell me all about their status when I would call and talk. She'd tell me how open they were, how many were left, or if they'd all passed their crime. I have bought my final bouquet and will lay it to rest with her, her favorite, pink roses. She always asked about Logan. She loved his work ethic and asked almost every day if he was working and where he was working, but she just never knew. She was especially happy in December when I told her he had bought a woodlot. The biggest smile came over her face and she told me I would now lose my husband to the woods. <laughs> she did back in the day. She loved that he was there for me, even when I needed to be there for her. And would have been smiling, knowing as I was holding her hand, he was holding mine. I'm starting to understand how she felt losing her purpose, as I feel I've lost some of mine too. She was the one person in my life that relied on me and knew if she called me, I would drop everything and be there within minutes. She needed me, but didn't realize I needed her more. And I'm not sure yet how I would go on in my life without her. But I know this is what she wanted. We talked about it a lot. And she knew what I needed to be able to say goodbye. Because as we said our goodbyes on Friday, she made sure I knew she was going to heaven, and people were waiting for her, and that it was her time. We can finally rejoice and smile that she got her wish. She's gone to be in heaven to be with Christ, and those who have passed before her. 
So as I told her, I'm ready if you like. As I read these in the end, realized that the hours you spent with your granny were hours well spent. Since we all knew Mary, I'd just like to say a few words about the time when, the times when uh, I got to experience her on my own. When I was in university and mom and dad were still in Kenya, I would spend Christmas, Easter, whatever, March break, uh, whenever school was closed, I would uh, come down to Baltimore and Mary always made it a special time, but I particularly remember uh, in December after exams were done, and I would be totally exhausted. I'd come down, and I remember her uh, sleeping in rather well after uh, being tired from weeks of exams. And uh, I don't think Elmo was quite so happy about me sleeping in, but Mary was always, let him sleep, he needs his rest. But what I do remember is the breakfast. At the time she had chickens, they had a, a cow, they had fresh milk, and fresh butter, and baked bread. And it was just a special time to be there with her. She was, she and her family were always so kind to us as we, we didn't have our parents around for those special times. I do remember one time when uh, when Kathy was there uh, at Christmas time, and uh, we all went down to Fundy Park and uh, decided to go sliding. I think Mary was 65 at the time, but she of course had to join us because uh, she certainly had a, a youthful spirit to her. So Mary meant a lot to me in those early years of me being in Canada. She was filled the role of a mother in those times where uh, I needed somewhere to go where I was in ways a little bit homeless and Mary was always there, the house was always welcoming. So it's such a, a great memory of her. My grandma Mary wasn't my grandmother. She was my grandma Mary. Before that, as a child, she was Mary and Elmo Nelson, as if she had no separate identity to me. Mary and Elmo Nelson's, where Dad took the chainsaws. Living in the thick of the boonies, if the truck left the driveway, it didn't matter where it was going, you wanted to be in it. This, as far as my mind can recall, is how I met Mary. It was many years later, after meeting my best friend, that she became Leanne's Grandma Mary to me. I started to learn so much more about her, and very little had to do with chainsaws, actually. <laughs> Mostly birds, her slides, her trips on the train, baking, church, or her children. At this time, her world revolved around caring for Alma and her two children. Witnessing someone become a widow with such grace, strength, and peace will forever be ingrained in my heart. When she again faced grief with the passing of Lynn, I was blessed and terrified to have been asked to sing at the funeral. Let me tell you, when Mary calls you and asks with, such, with as much strength to her wobbling voice as possible, if you would sing for her Lynn, you say yes and you worry about the nerves and the inevitable tears later. I had been calling her Grandma Mary for some time at this point. It seemed natural, as natural to me as Shosho and Gugu. Honestly, I haven't had grandparents of my own since I was 12, so if I can hijack a couple here and there, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but 
The card I received from her for singing at Lynn's funeral was signed, Grandma Mary. Just you try and separate us after that. <laughs> I witnessed the love and devotion she had caring for Lauren as his health failed. You really examine the complaints you have in your life after being a part of that. I was blessed and thankful that following his death, she helped me gather all his plaid shirts to make Leanna quilt for a keepsake. We were both so pleased to pull it off without her finding out beforehand, and neither of us had to lie to achieve it. <laughs> <laughs> then I was blessed to witness the strong relationship that her and Leanne had. As the best friend and nearly constant companion, I was often included in their hijinks. One of my favorite days was the day we spent shopping for a new dress for Stephen's wedding. Taking a woman in her 90s, shopping for a dress with sleeves, lots of color, but not too old ladyish, was a hoot. <laughs> now in my family, we shop off the clearance rack or we don't shop at all. With Grandma Mary, you weren't supposed to look at the price tag. If she put the dress on and she felt good, the price was right. I, as well, found myself in a car racing to the emergency room with Leanne to meet the ambulance on several occasions. At 98 years old, she had the honor of racing nearly every bed in there at one time or another. <laughs> it was during these times I began to see how much trust Grandma Mary had in Leanne. Leanne would patiently explain what the doctors were saying and what was going on. She would advocate for Mary and make sure her Grammy got the best care available. And when, when nurses were too busy to tend to her, Leanne put her skills that she learned from Mary on how to care for someone to good use. They had great times too, getting their nails done, taking in church services, or that one music night she forgot her hearing aids, so Leanne had to drive all the way back to the home so Grammy wouldn't have to be blind and deaf at the end. Oftentimes, these outings meant she needed a caretaker, not just a granddaughter. Someone to take her sugar levels and administer insulin, someone to be her anchor and support, an arm to loop through. Her eyes, as Leanne would announce who the blurry blobs in front of her were. Watching the two of them was a bit comical for me at times. Leanne's purpose in life was to always make her granny happy, to make sure she had a good time. But the flip side was watching Grandma Mary constantly try to make sure it was Leanne taking care of and having a good time. It was a good thing they were each other's good time. They were cut from the same cloth, you see, both selfless but with a stubborn streak longer than, a ten, than ten football fields. I could tell stories here, but I won't. <laughs> I could spend an entire day alone, in silence, and feel absolutely peaceful and blessed. The two of them would spontaneously combust if they didn't get their word quota in. I'm certain that's how they ended up being so close, the only two in the household willing to have a conversation for the sake of having a conversation. Her 95th birthday, Leanne and I set up a whole beautiful photo shoot. You only turn 95 once, and we knew opportunities to do these kinds of things were going to become rare. We took our photos, lots of cute ones with cupcakes and sparklers in her Bible. She was the perfect model. She knew photography, and knew the subject being able to take direction was important. Then she spent another hour or so just talking to Leanne and I. She told us all about her younger years, stories of her schooling and before having her kids, the photo of her graduation bringing the memories flooding back. Grandma Mary was one of my favorite people to photograph. We couldn't be more different though. Her photography was a show, a planned series of shots that told a predetermined story, landscapes that held history in their valleys and rivers and branches. I hide in the corners and behind the noise to get the shot no one is looking for, the moments in between, the unplanned. I took the picture accompanying her obituary. She didn't know she was being photographed. When she found out how much Leanne and I loved it, she said, but I'm not even looking at the camera. If I had known, I would have posed. <laughs> <laughs> this New Year's, we went to her window with dozens of sparklers to celebrate. Leanne called her to be able to talk through the window better. When Mary answered the phone, she hurriedly said, I can't talk right now, Leanne's at the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm incredibly thankful for the Afghan she made my husband and I for our wedding. It was made with love, especially for me. The dashes of neon yarn thrown in there, a nod to my quirky spirit. I've got more stories, but I think some of them are better stored in my heart, taking root there and shaping me into someone more like Grandma Mary. 
Someone who knows her Bible so well she can read it blind. Someone who devotes herself to caring for her family above all else. Someone who loves first and leaves the judgment to the one who really matters. Someone that takes in strays and makes them family. Someone who knows without a doubt where she's going when she goes. The kind of love Grandma Mary gave was the unconditional kind. I've heard so many stories of how her influence, guidance, and love shaped people. Mistakes could be made, and love was still overflowing for you. Getting to hug her and have her say, I love you, and knowing deep down she has no obligation to, is one of the most beautiful and validating things to experience. I will cherish the blessing of it forever. Nothing will fill the emptiness we are feeling, but I will say, for every lonely moment and stab of grief, I will remember how proud she was of us and how hard she prayed for us. She will take, so we will take those feelings of lost purpose and hold on to the knowledge that she wanted only the best for us and her prayers are no longer long distance. wonderful to hear these memories shared and yes to laugh mm -hmm. yeah it's okay to laugh we, we're sad but we can laugh and as I said earlier you know we just need to hold on to these memories each and every day the blessing I know that Mary was to so many people and I just want to extend mm -hmm. my uh, words of comfort to the family at this time and I know it's a loss but I know that God is going to comfort and strengthen you, each one of those who are here and those that aren't able to be here as well. So. Let's just take a few moments now as we sort of come to the end of our time together to turn to the Word of God and uh, to think upon... I thought when I went to bed last night, I knew what I was going to say today. When I got this morning, it had changed. So that's how things go, I guess. So. Anyway, in the Gospel of John, and in chapter 14, and in some, in, in some into chapter 13, uh, we find that the disciples were troubled. Jesus had expressed to them that he was going to leave them. He had told them, one of you is going to betray me. And Peter, he said, you're going to deny me. But Jesus encouraged them as we come into John 14 by speaking words of comfort and words of peace. And Jesus spoke these words to the disciples in the midst of their fears, in the midst of their uncertainty, and in the midst of their struggles. Let me share the first six verses, his words to his disciples of John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus' intent was to comfort and ease the fears in the hearts of his disciples. For they surely needed it at that time. And as we're gathered here this evening, our hearts are sorrowful. They are sorrowful and they're sad and, and they're broken. But Jesus knows that. And Jesus 
even tonight speaks his words of reassurance and his words of comfort to us. Just four brief points this evening. First, the peace that Jesus provides. You find that in verse 1. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. He's giving a command. You might be thinking, well, how can we endure sorrow without being troubled? We must trust him with those things we don't understand. We trust him. What does Jesus say? Trust in God. Trust also in me. These words are a remedy for troubled hearts. Trust in God. And Jesus will set our hearts at ease. Later on in this chapter, in verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. During Mary's life journey, she encountered her struggles. She encountered her heartaches and challenges in life. Yet I know that Mary was able to trust God and she knew his peace within her each and every moment. Secondly, the place Jesus is preparing. We find that in verse 2. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. The disciples should have been comforted and we should be comforted by the fact that Jesus is preparing a place for his children in heaven, in heaven. And Jesus, with these words, is promising believers a home in heaven. And we know that words cannot accurately describe the beauty and the splendor of heaven. John tries to do it in Revelation. But just, there are no, I don't believe, earthly words that can really exp express the splendor of heaven. But the important truth for believers is that we have a home in heaven when this life is over. And we shall see Jesus, we shall be with him forever and forever. I know Mary was looking forward to heaven. She was. And Mary is now in heaven with Jesus and with her loved ones. One is written, who could mind the journey when the road leads home? Blessed assurance. Thirdly, the promise Jesus pronounces. We find that in verse 3. He says, I will come back and take you to be with me. This is a promise that brings hope to troubled hearts. This emphasis of his coming is not on the many rooms, or as some translation says, the mansions, but the emphasis is on the prospect of not only seeing Jesus, but being with him forever and forever. He is coming again. He is coming again. The very same Jesus rejected of men. He is coming again with power and great glory. He is coming again. The question is, are you ready for his coming? And fourthly, the path Jesus prescribes, and we find that in verse 6. The thought of Jesus leaving, that sort of threw Thomas sort of for, I guess, a loop, or just put him into despair. If Jesus was going to leave them, how could he ever learn the way to him? How are we going to know the way to you, Jesus? And you, you're familiar with Jesus' answer, I trust. I am the way and the truth and the life. You see, there's only one way. There's only one road. There's only one plan of salvation. And Mary was on that way. She was on that road. She had accepted Christ. And in her life's journey of faith has now brought her to heaven with Jesus. But Jesus clearly states, I am the way to God. I am the way to heaven. Peter stated it this way, salvation is found in no one else.
For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. In a personal relationship with Jesus, we discover the way to God. The truth that puts our existence into perspective and an eternal life that is to be lived here and now and in the future. Mary would want me, I know, to ask this question tonight. Is Jesus your Savior? Do you know him as your friend? Are you on the path Jesus prescribed? If you are, may you know the peace that Jesus provides. May you be excited about the place Jesus is preparing for you. And may you be looking with anticipation for his return. May these words bring comfort and encouragement to our hearts this evening. Now Don is going to share another number of song with us. has been with us. And I pray, Father, that uh, even these words of Jesus tonight might just continue to bring comfort to our hearts. As he said, let not your hearts be troubled. We trust in God, trust also in me. And Father, we are thankful for all that 
you have prepared for your children through your Son, Jesus Christ. We are thankful that we can say with great assurance tonight that Mary is with her Savior and with her loved ones. And that brings us comfort as well as joy. So, Father, I just pray your continued peace and comfort to be upon the hearts of each one in these coming days. And now may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.